Welcome to the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show, a broadcast service of globalbusinessnews.net. Now, here's your host, Ed Cohen. This is Ed Cohen in San Diego, and today is November 22, the year 2021. So we have 20, 21, 22, November. So it's the day that JFK was shot, and I remember oh. that as a kid. Mm. And uh, I was a senior in high school then. So mm. it was, uh, I remember it to this day, this minute. So anyway, uh, here we are in the year 2021. And frankly, I'm looking forward to the year 22 and uh, getting things back to normal and business travel and uh, face to face with a lot of mm -hmm. my people who are business people. Our special guest today is Dr. Pamela Ellis, and I'm really happy to meet you. It's the first time we're meeting. It is, Ed. I'm very excited to meet you as well. So where are you located? I am located in Columbus, Ohio. I've never been. Really? You're kidding. I've been to Cleveland. <laughs> okay. Well, you've been to Ohio, at least. Cleveland, yeah. yes. Yeah, that's different. But uh, I've also been in uh, where the university is, down Athens. Athens, really? Ohio yeah. University is there. Yes, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Uh, Appalachia country. Yeah, that's down yeah. there in the southeast uh -huh. corner. Yeah. 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 So uh, a former brother-in-law went there. We went there. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and I'm in San Diego. I'm originally from Boston and moved to L.A. in 1980. Wow. And, and then uh, San Diego in 94. Yeah. And yeah. California is one of those places where it's hard to leave. <laughs> oh, I'll go to Maui anytime. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, okay. So your, uh, your job, let's, let's get into this. Uh, so we're going to be talking about... Uh, we have company. <laughs> so um, pets, spouses, partners, everybody's welcome to the show. Especially in these <laughs> days. Right, right. So th does the dog want to talk? <laughs> okay. So we're going to be talking about balancing work and life, parenting through the teen years, entrepreneurship. It takes an entrepreneur to do all of those things. And then uh, mental wellness and self-care for moms. Okay, so uh, what's your day job? My day job is as a college consultant. Does Doggy want to get fed? <laughs> I don't know what it is. He's been <laughs> quiet the whole time. And it's just like, right when I start talking to you, he starts parking I'm so sorry. <laughs> no it's okay we we broadcast anyway so um okay so uh say again what your day job is college consultant okay does that mean you consult to colleges or you consult in a college professorship actually what i am doing is partnering with moms around helping their teen with finding a college that feels like home without overpaying. Well, now that is really timely. Yes. Okay, so college meaning, let's be simple here. That means actually going to live in a college. Or, yes, uh, it rather is than, a rather, residential not, experience. Yeah, not okay. online stuff. This is the real thing. Right. Okay, well, it's totally different because when I was a, a kid, and uh, a little confused at the time. <laughs> um, I commuted to a very good college, uh, about 10 miles from where I was living with my parents at the time. And uh, God, I hated doing that because I missed what I thought would be better, college life on campus residency and, and actually getting away from home. Um, but I couldn't stand the courses that I was involved with I, in accounting. Really? Oh, God, I hated it. And uh, 
A couple of courses I really loved, uh, they're marketing and psych social psychology, PR. Uh, that's, that was it. But of course I didn't know it at the time. Uh, and then I said, yuck, I gotta get out of the county. And uh, I did, but it also meant escape from home. And I went away to college about a hundred miles away and rural. I grew up in the city and uh, I needed a change. I needed to see cows and green hills <laughs> and fresh air and no noise. And um, God, I just loved it. And it enveloped me into, well, finding myself. And, and then I excelled. I made Dean's List first semester. And then I got involved in the college paper as a reporter. And then I got involved, I'm, I'm gonna stop talking about me, but I just wanna let you know that I understand totally the thing what you're doing. And uh, I became the college disc jockey, you know, records and all that. But we also invited people to come on and do interviews. And that was an innovation uh, at the time. Anyway, back to you. So uh, are what you you're working? What you're talking about, though, is all about what I do, Ed, because my focus is around, you know, helping teens with finding that right fit. And what you just described speaks to that because you found it after having experienced college and gotten a taste for it with commuting. But, you know, a lot of what I'm doing and the research that I've developed and worked on over the years is around how do you, you know, find that right place while you're in high school and how do you position yourself, you know, in terms of doing those things that you care about most so that once you do go away to college, that's a place where you'll be for four years and you're more likely to finish in four years when you have put those things together ahead of time and made those choices around what it is that you want as opposed to going for the sake of going because that sounds like what you did in terms of going into accounting and commuting is kind of like this is what's convenient but not necessarily what Ed wanted. Correct. Yes. Perfect. Mm -hmm. No, I, I love the experience. Uh, it, it was really different and there's a lot to learn. Uh, and you know, stumbled here and stumbled there. But it was it was really uh, cathartic. <laughs> it was great, and and I made the most of it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, one of your uh, bullet points is about helping moms. Uh, yes. Self care for moms. What's that about? Oh my goodness. Um, women and moms in particular tend to do so much for everyone else and oftentimes forget about, you know, refill, refilling their own cup. And so self-care is just about that. How do we, you know, get our cup refilled? Because you can't pour out of an empty cup, but in so many cases we are. And so you know, my philosophy and approach to it is that self-care is something that happens every day. And it could be small things, you know, so it's not just going to the spa, you know, once a month and, you know, doing everything in one day, but it's, what are those things around breathing, around mindfulness, around uh, just general mental wellness? What are those things you can do environmentally that makes your own space more, inviting and recharges your energy. So that's what self-care is about. It's about paying attention to your needs while you're also taking care of everyone else's needs. So let's talk about moms. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's an overwhelming push yeah. and pull at uh, the same time. Back mm -hmm. about who am I and what am I supposed to be doing and I have to stop thinking about myself and I have to get into baby talk or I have to get into dealing 
with a situation that the kid doesn't mm -hmm. get and I have to help mm -hmm. and, and I have to do this and I have to do that. And, you know, what about me? You know? And, and mm -hmm. so that every, that's a normal thing, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the, what's the philosophy? What, what's the, the bridge over troubled waters there? You know, how to, what's the pathway? for, uh, let's say, a woman who's having mm -hmm. that kind of stress. Of course, a lot has to do with her, if she's in a relationship with a, a normal relationship, call it with a man. Yeah. Um, how all that is, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. I'm, I'm going to stop talking. Yeah. So. yeah. And the thing about it is that I think as women, sometimes we tend to be more wired to care, you know, for others. So like, let's say um, a mom who is married, oftentimes women may be doing maybe 80% of household chores and work plus caring for the child. And that means then that, you know, it's going to be more on her plate and require more as far as getting to a place of feeling comfortable with also doing for herself. And I work a lot with moms who have teenagers and still you, you see this, um, for lack of a better word, enabling where they're still doing things for their kids, even when they're older. And I feel that my role as a coach is around coaching parents on how to let go and to let go gracefully so that once their kid is in college, they're not still, you know, having to rely on their mom, you know, to do everything for them that they learn those skills of self-advocacy. They learn those skills of independence, you know, while they're still at home. And so I just think that it's something that, you know, society doesn't necessarily teach us because we can feel guilty, you know, if we're not, you know, putting our kids ahead of everything else or putting, you know, our family or our career ahead of everything else. But where does that leave us in terms of also taking care of ourselves? So there's an identity crisis going on, but um, how do, how do, uh, well, I happen to know someone who uh, had an excellent um, time raising two kids alone. Her, her husband died in a plane crash when the kids were tiny. So she did a lot on her own. And so just total immersion. And, uh, you know, traumatic experience. And uh, she she saved herself mentally through that immersion. So to this day, um, she, she's still uh, in charge, taking care of doing this, doing that, even to the point of enough, <laughs> back off. Uh, and it's very difficult. I happen to know that person well, so. Uh. Yeah, that is hard. Um, I, uh, I've had a couple of clients who were widows and I definitely saw that in them in terms of just wanting to keep holding on as they're child was planning towards college, um, you know, just some of the control around wanting them to stay close to home in terms of their choices and, you know, some other things that came up uh, 
in our work together. And so I definitely understand that mourning of that loss and just those, um, gosh, that, that feeling of you don't want to lose them as well. That's kind of how I understand it. So the teen years, let's talk about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. That, so, um, that's all psychology, all psychology. I, I mean, that's, that's a hundred percent. Okay. <laughs> because you, you're dealing with the kid who, who's growing and yet not to another place sort of in the yeah. and mm -hmm. there's certain things different attitudes and whatever yes. and some things you just got to back off right and just let them get you do. get hurt you do yeah you do and the thing about it is that teens they hear things differently from a third party than they do from mom or dad and so that's really one of the reasons that you know um, businesses like mine can thrive is because of that, because we're serving in that role of that third party that they'll listen to. So even if I'm saying something that's the same thing that their mom has said about, you know, them doing something they need to do to get ready for college, it's received differently from me as an outsider as opposed to hearing it from their mom. When their mom is saying it, they're nagging them. But when I say it, it's like, oh, sure, Dr. Pamela. Yeah, I'll read that aloud for you. <laughs> and it's nothing against, you know, mom or dad, but it's just as a third party, you hear it differently. And I have talked with a lot of, you know, parents about that, you know, even if they're not, you know, uh, if, even if they haven't hired me uh, to work with them in any way, I always suggest, you know, getting help from a teacher or their coach, because they will hear things differently from them than they will from their parent. And there's another voice, another, yeah. mm -hmm. another, yeah. pl another place speaking. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Hi, this is Ed. And I thank you for tuning in to Global TV Talk Show, a uh, unit on globalbusinessnews.net. Uh, we uh, broadcast to the world, as you know by now. So I wanted to make sure that you understand that our programs are advertising supported. We're grateful for co-sponsors, advertisers. Um, they have a marketing budget coupled with a strong desire to be associated with our top quality program. And of course, I'm grateful. Thank you. So for the next few minutes, you're going to see some uh, commercials. It's uh, mostly very low key. And uh, our prices are very, very reasonable. Uh, our exposure for the advertisers go 12 months and beyond. Some of our advertisers have been with us since March, April of 2020. And Google Analytics has tracked uh, over 125,000 what they call audience page views, which means you looking at this page, that's a page view. Now, if you happen to go to one of our other shows or to our radio, broadcasts or to our newspaper or magazine, those become additional page views as measured by Google Analytics. And so when they say 125,000 since uh, spring of 2020 up through uh, Labor Day a month ago, that's pretty good numbers. And uh, the past 30 days, Google Analytics has measured uh, just under 6,000 audience page views. Uh, and that, according to them, is a 42% increase in audience participation over the month of August. So thank you very much. Well, here's our advertisers, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes or so, and we'll proceed with 
this interesting conversation. Thank you. This episode from the Meeting Room of Global TV Talk Show is brought to you by The Bridge School, the accredited international online private school of choice at bridgek12.org. Porch Light Rental and Destination Services. Reduce your renter lump sum or managed relocation costs. Visit them at porchlightrental.com. And by Airs.com. With our full range of services, we can help design and manage your international relocation. Find us at Airs.com. Primestone Partners, featuring corporate, government, and developer housing solutions, as well as senior level advisory services. Find them at PrimestonePartners.com. And by International Auto Source. We are the vehicle experts for expats, featuring all major brands of automobiles with flexible solutions and financing. On the web at intlauto.com. Become a global player in your field. Cross Culture To Go provides virtual support for your global business and career success. We can help you thrive in 140 plus countries and markets. On the web at crossculturetogo.com. Something that's really neat is that the Bridge School partners with various organizations to provide learning for their students. For example, we partner with a major ballet company and we are able to enroll several of their students into our school. So now not only is the student able to participate in a school and have a seamless transition while they're very active in their ballet career, but now they have um, other dancers that are with them that are doing some of the same courses. So it's almost becoming a, a camaraderie where they're taking similar courses, they're working together on their ballet, and really being able to form this great partnership with these organizations to provide a needed service. A lot of times um, there are student athletes who will spend hours and hours at the gym or um, at the, the basketball courts, wherever it is. And if they're attending a traditional school, they're in school from eight to three. They get a quick snack and then they're at the gym for three to four hours in the evening. Coming to us and having that partnership, they're able to break that up throughout the day. They can have a morning practice, get some schooling in, have an afternoon practice, finish their schooling in the evening. So there's that flexibility. And additionally, if there are tournaments or performances, it's fantastic because if there's a week where they have shows straight through, they can take that week off of learning and then pick back up when they're done. So it offers the this great flexibility and for the program owners of these sports leagues it is a win-win situation for them because they see this need they see this need that their students need to make sure that they are obtaining the grades necessary to be successful adults in in our country and in other countries but it provides them an environment where they can be successful at both Hi, I'm Sergei Gorbatov. I'm Angela Lane. Together we are researchers, writers and practitioners in the field of human resources. And we've also been multi-country, multi-assignment career expats. We owe our professional development and growth to a very large extent to the international assignment opportunities that we have had. But in a world where distributed work may become the norm, we also want to understand what happened to the nature, duration and purpose of international assignments. Together with our colleague Julian Delzell from the University of South Carolina, we're undertaking a study on the future of expatriation. And we value your contribution. You can participate in this important study by completing a simple 10-minute questionnaire. Access the questionnaire by typing in your browser tinyurl.com forward slash expert study. That's tinyurl.com forward slash expert study. You can also find the link here on Ed's website next to this video. Thank you for joining us in this 
study in return for your contribution. We'll provide you with a copy of our research. And of course, you'll be invited to an exclusive webinar hosted by Ed, where we will share our findings right here on Global Business News. And so please go to tinyurl.com forward slash expat study. Take the survey so that we can better understand the future of expatriation. In that regard, mm -hmm. there's sort of an embarrassment. Uh, I mean, just putting myself into a situation. Really? Thinking, you know, thinking back. Mm -hmm. Well, there's someone else who's a stranger telling me, hey, kid, yeah. fix, fix this. And, oh, well, it's not that. You know, that's the football coach telling me that. Mm -hmm. And so it has different weight. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting when you use that term, that embarrassment, because, um, you know, sometimes I've wondered that about, you know, the parents, you know, if they're feeling that. And yeah, maybe it's the teen that's feeling that sense of embarrassment if um, they know that they're getting help from someone else outside of their family. Um, but, you know, I feel like that third party's role isn't to usurp that role. And it doesn't mean that they're not still close. I mean, uh, the families that I work with, they're still close families. It's just that teens hear things differently from me. <laughs> and if I am on the road all the time visiting colleges, you know, I've visited over 500 campuses, I'm going to have something different to say than their mom, because, you know, perhaps mom, you know, has visited a few campuses. She probably hasn't visited that many. And she's, you know, may know her alma mater, but she's not going to know all of the other colleges that could be a good fit for them. And so that changes the dynamic of it. And the same way, you know, for their football coach, their football coach is doing that day in, day out. And so if mom or dad is trying to coach them in that sport, they're not going to know it in the same way. And it's, it's just, as parents, we can't be all things to our children. So um, one of your bullet points is entrepreneurship. So how do you view that? Oh, my goodness. I, I, I just... I believe that it is, um, it's not for everyone, that's for sure. But for those who feel that they have a gift of entrepreneurship, I think it's the best way to do what you really enjoy doing and to thrive at another level. Um, I have worked in corporate. I worked in corporate for um, over 10 years. Um, I had a career in finance and banking and it just, it really just wasn't for me. Simple as that. And when I did um, leave that industry and started working in education, I never forget, Ed, I was working uh, with this company um, and, you know, did good work, but there would just be these little things where I just felt like uh, they were just needling at me, you know, and I could never do right by the owners. And we were working on a project together. And I just remember all the hours I put in working on that project. We did end up getting the project. It was over a quarter million dollar project. And they never said, thank you. They never said, thank you. And I just thought, really, you know, as hard as I had worked on this project, how much I had given to it, just to think that they didn't say thank you. They, it's, it's like they didn't even acknowledge me in any way for having brought in that kind of business to their firm and helping their growth. And I just thought, you know, if I can work this hard for someone else and they're not even grateful, surely I could do this for myself. So let's transfer <laughs> that experience and the words that mm -hmm. 
you just expressed to uh, this thing called the great resignation. <laughs> well, yes. If, uh, that's the same idea, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, people are just walking out. Yeah, yeah. And I think that in the last, you know, 20 months, what, you know, people have seen is that they can, in some, they, they have already started being entrepreneurial in a sense, you know, in being at home, right. having more uh, ownership of their time. And it's just work isn't giving them that same satisfaction. And they know what it was like prior to March of 2020. And just the concern of, you know, I don't want to go back to that. I don't want to go back to that. Because even in times when it's been hard in my business, or maybe I wasn't as profitable as I should have been or couldn't bring home as much, you know, when I think back to being in corporate and having to do FaceTime or I think about those times when, you know, on Sunday nights, I'd have butterflies because I just wasn't excited about going to work the next day. I, you know, I just, I get up the next morning and I start it all over again, but I do not have that sense that I'm, I'm going to go and apply for a job. <laughs> I just don't. I mean, even with, you know, all the jobs that are out there now is plenteous. And perhaps I could, you know, do something that I had wanted to do years ago when I finished business school, but I don't know, the thought of, thought of doing that just somehow isn't appealing because of the loss of flexibility. And maybe, you know, it would be a hybrid situation where I could still work from home, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's still so many other dynamics that go with it that just don't appeal to me anymore. And so, so I get it. Yeah. So I, I see, I'm looking at your uh, LinkedIn mm -hmm. page here, excuse me, as we, we have to come to a close in the next five yes. minutes there. We could probably talk for an hour, but <laughs> I'm not sure the audience will want to stay. But so, uh, <laughs> MBA and PhD, you like learning, don't you? I love learning. And you know something, I'm still thinking about another degree from the Ohio State University. So yes, I do love learning. Well, that's a good place to hang out too, isn't it? It is a great place to hang out. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, you could see it in the, like I was watching the uh, football game last night on TV. Uh, uh huh because my team is uh, the Chargers. Um, and yet on both sides, both mm -hmm. teams had guys uh, uh, who were players yes. and they, each one said, look right in the thing, uh, right in the uh -huh. camera and said, the Ohio State. <laughs> yes, go Bucks. <laughs> yes. Including uh, Joey Bosa in the final uh -huh. Chargers. Um, but all these other guys too. And yeah. everybody really has like, like, wow, that was a great thing. It still is. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited about getting that next degree from there. But I learn every day, Ed. And so that's, you know, the wonderful thing about um, all of the technology and all of the resources that we have around today is I can still keep learning, um, even though I want to get that next degree from the Ohio State University. <laughs> And so the degree is going to be in life or what's, um, what's the topic? Uh, I think it's going to be in design learning. Oh, so, design thinking? Uh, not design thinking. It's more um, in line with uh, learning technologies. So something in that area. <laughs> so application to life. Yes. Uh, not to life, but more specifically to learning overall. So, wow, you're a treat. <laughs> so, listen, I want you to come back again and I certainly uh, will. be part of perhaps a group discussion. And uh, mm -hmm. I'll be glad to make introductions, of course. Dr. That'll Pamela be great. Ellis. I look forward to that. Yeah. So, everybody go to LinkedIn and look at Dr. Pamela Ellis. And uh, what is the website that they can find all your stuff on? 
compasscollegeadvisory.com. Got it. Thanks for being on uh, Global TV Talk Show. So this is about guidance. This is about, well, it's guidance and education. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. We'll be back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us in the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show. Have a wonderful day and stay safe. Thank you.